welcome all of our in-studio guests and our viewers from around the globe. Today, we are here with the legendary futurist, Faith Popcorn. Thank you. Very, it's great to have you here today. Over our time together, we're going to talk about the metaverse, psychedelics, songs of the future. Your personal life. My personal <laughs> life. Uh, sure, you can, you can throw any question you want my way. It's all okay. good. Um, it's going to be a, a fun ride. So I know that you have tons of fanboys, fangirls that follow you across the globe, um, but maybe there's a few people out there that don't know your full background. So I'm going to share a little bit of that. Uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with Faith, Faith is an acclaimed futurist, author, and founder of Faith Popcorn's Brain Reserve, the futurist marketing consultancy, which began in 1974. And we're going to go back to the popcorn origin story in just a moment. The New York Times called um, called her the Trend Oracle. Future magazine, uh, Fortune magazine named her the Nostradamus of marketing, and she is recognized globally as the original and foremost futurist. As the key strategist for Faith Popcorn's Brain Reserve, Faith and her team are trusted advisors to the CEOs of the Fortune 200. Uh, she's been invited to speak all over the world, Con South by Southwest, which you were there last week, mm -hmm. the Wall Street Journal. She's a best-selling author. I think four books, which we will talk about today. Uh, tons of media. I think you've um, graced uh, many, uh -huh. many different publications. And I didn't know this until you gave me this bio, but you were raised in Shanghai, Shanghai uh, sixth-generation New Yorker, a graduate of New York High School of Performing Arts in New York University. And I did know you're a mother of two wonderful daughters. Thank you. Two wonderful Chinese daughters. That's right. Adopted, adopted from China. Right. We're going to talk about that okay. in, in a moment. So, um, you know, many people have followed your career. You've been doing this, as we, we said, since 1974. Um, an amazing career. I mean, super inspiring. I would love for you to take us on the journey a little bit. Let's go back to the popcorn origin story. How did you get started? Because you've truly shaped what this industry and what futurism looks like. Well, I started my company. I was an advertising agency. Okay. And um, I quit one day and I got mad. You said I had enough. <laughs> I broke up with my boss. Broke up. Okay. Uh -huh. That happens. So anyway, I uh, said, I'm you know, going to start this company. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't get any income for 10 years because I decided I'm starting this futurist company. And people go, what's that? And the popcorn origin, origin of the name story was these guys from Fortune, I guess, got interested. Like They go like, oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. And they came up and they said, um, you know, we want to interview you. Well, I had no clients, but I made up things I would tell clients if I had them. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, your vision board of clients. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> My imaginary clients, I said, <clears throat> you know, um, herbal medicine and all kinds of things that I was studying, which eventually became a New York Times article. Uh, Dougherty at that time picked it up, and that was the beginning of actually banding or my idea of what was coming, but it was because the Fortune guys were coming up. And they come up with their pencils. That's how long ago it was, you know. Go, okay, so tell me um, about, and I'm all ready with my story, and just tell me about how you got your name. And I said, is that, that's why you're here? <laughs> and they said, why else would we be here? <clears throat> Good point. So um, I said, my grandfather, you know, came from Italy. And in Italy, uh, our family name was Corne. And he was quite old when he came over. And he came over through, you know, the Statue of Liberty. And, the, mm. and when he landed, they said, sir, what is your name? And he said, my name is Papa Corne. I said, and I shortened it to Popcorn, and that's how I got my name. <laughs> wow. I'm 100% Jewish, by the way. <laughs> so, well, you know, they wrote it all down, mm -hmm. and they published it. And you wonder why they've never come back. <laughs> well, anyway, that was my name origin that story. Was the start. But really, it was um, an art director that said, I can't say this Plotkin. What is that? Mm -hmm. So I, he called me Popcorn. And um, so I just took it. I changed it. And that's how I started in my studio apartment wow. with no business. And, and clients that were your, you were visualizing? Yeah. Writing <clears throat> emails uh -huh. saying, don't you want to meet me or something? Yeah. And then eventually someone, you know, gave me $10,000 or like this one woman at Colgate. Every 
November, gave me ten thousand. I don't know if it was charity or what, <laughs> <clears throat> and made up something. <clears throat> sorry that she wanted me to figure out. Her yeah. name was Ariel Allen, and um, and that's how I got that was started. The beginnings. Very yeah. beginning. So you know that you've made it once. Not only you are talking about culture, but you are a part of pop culture, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, I am a big fan of the HBO Max uh, show Succession. I love it. As I know, there's many so people here. So evil. We talk about it on Slack all the time. And I loved <laughs> watching the most recent season and seeing you referenced in it. Oh, that so was I want, fun. I, I want to show the clip of Kendall Roy talking about Faith Popcorn. Okay. So I consulted with Gladwell and Harari and Lovelock and Popcorn. And this in here, it's, uh, it's pretty technical. But this is the best we could come up with on the likely directions of society. So, a little dry, but accurate, I would say. <laughs> That's a plus. Um, no, I had no idea. People started writing to me, well, who's your PR person? <laughs> I don't have any PR people. But, um, yeah, that was really cool. And I've been on Jeopardy. Um, as, name, you, as you were questioning Jeopardy. Yeah, huh? name the futures that came up with the word cocooning, maybe that was it, or something like that. That was kind of adorable. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whatever. So so from that apartment in 1974... My studio those, apartment. Visionary, you know, visioning clients to succession, name-dropping, to Jeopardy question. It's quite a career, right? It's been interesting. So you... As, as I started with, I mean, there's a lot of people who follow you. I, I saw a photo that you did at South by last week, and you said, my Brazilian fangirls. Yeah. And so forth and so on. And, you know, you, you in your career, um, over the time that you've kind of helped build the industry, we all have these moments that, that kind of reshape, you know, what um, your career becomes mm -hmm. and what the industry becomes. Could you elaborate on a couple of those pivotal moments that really stand out for you that kind of sent you forward into, into the, the succession stratosphere? Well, I think getting fired many times helped because I realized, yes, you're not just making this up, Faith. You don't really belong in, you know, a structure. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, one thing. And I think that... Did that happen early on? And so you're like, this It happened is just every not... time. Oh, every time. Yeah. yeah. I've heard other entrepreneurs <laughs> say that. They're like, every job they ever had, they got fired. I got fired for wearing too short a skirt. I got fired for going into a far more. Uh, too fact, short? Yeah. Wow. Rabbit, too. You know, wow. I wouldn't do that today, the rabbit part. <laughs> um, and then I was in a far more factory, and they would do this, you know, that's how they make pots they used to, you know. Mm -hmm. And I go, aren't they going to, like, couldn't an accident happen if they keep going? I mean, like, and they said, never bring her back here. So that, many, many things. I was writing poetry in my office, uh, whatever, you know. So anyway, I thought I'd better open up my own thing and make my own rules. Yeah. I don't like getting fired, so I don't fire myself, so mm -hmm. I'm good. As a matter of fact, I don't ever fire anybody, so. <laughs> and I started, like, a, like, almost like a mission, because nobody understood futurism. Mm-hmm. So um, I try to explain it. I try to explain why you should know what's around the corner, mm -hmm. why you should know what people in dark corners are doing because they may end up yeah. starting a company and killing you. So I think, I think that... Uh, That's this whole thing to unpack, starting a company and killing you. But <laughs> Yeah, well, killing you... Well, we'll get to my father yeah. later, right? But <clears throat> killing you, you know, in business. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I got stubborn about it. I'm a Taurus. Mm -hmm. So that's me, that's the bull. And I go like, I'm doing this no matter what. And there are plenty no matter what. So that was part of it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I did this. I was, well, like Sarah Devonso would say, I was very curious. Yeah. I didn't like to ever be by myself. So I have the talent bank. I have 10,000 people. I have friends, people in the company. I like to think together. I don't need alone time. I don't have boundaries. You can look in my bag if you want to. Whatever. <laughs> so all the boundaries are inside. Yeah. So I like that. I mean, one of those moments being removing boundaries, <clears throat> right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's beautiful. The team put together that, this shirt, <clears throat> Aww. which I think is that's perfect. So cute. Yes, coming out of succession. You, I, maybe we should have those made Alphabetical. for you. Alphabetical. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, my name would be first, of right? Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I mean, that's... What, what do you mean? Um, so... 
you've done a lot in your career. I mean, I, I want to stay with the career for a second. I mean, you've built the industry. You've, you're an author. Mm -hmm. um, some incredible books. We had some of our in-studio guests saying that they read your books and have been inspired by your books. You're a founder. I mean, you started a company. And I, I would love to hear you talk about what has allowed you to do all those things because there's talents in each of them. You know, like getting a company off the ground requires a certain kind of talent. Blazing the tra trail of an industry requires a different talent. Um, writing books, making music. You know, like, yeah. what, what, what inspires you and makes you really effective in those areas? I'm still trying to get the company off the ground. <laughs> so that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very, Always reinventing yourself, right? Yeah, <laughs> and also, uh, you know, like, uh, not able to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, Indra talked a lot about that, too. I'm her fangirl. Yeah. We all are. Yeah. Uh, you know, just having to jump from one thing to the other. And I think they relate. And my main goal, really, was to get people to believe in futurism. Mm. Because it's almost like I could see it coming down the track, and they couldn't or didn't want to. And I, we would say to McDonald's, you're on Tobacco Road, baby. You know, this thing is coming. It's going to be fat. It's going to be sugar. It's going to be animals. You shouldn't be killing all those cows. And, and they go like, no, and get, I'm still there. Don't, does she have to come back? I mean, like, <laughs> oh. So I think, I think getting people to look forward is really my heart's goal, whether I sing it to them, whether I read it to them, whether it's fiction, whether it's science fiction, whether it's real, whether it's whatever. Yeah. Maybe the art of, of convincing is multisensory, you know? Like, it is. Because when you take someone on a journey and you show them something for the first time, there's immediate resistance, right? It's right. Like, no, no, I don't want to believe that can happen. Second time, too. Yeah. And so <laughs> you, it, that, that um, education process is right. so core. I think even Indra talked about it. She was like, you know, as a CEO, someone could come in and tell you this, this incredible idea but as a CEO, you're powerless in making it happen unless you can bring everyone else along. And so I think that's part of, of it. How do you educate the staff or, you know, everyone else around and, and take them on that journey? Is it possible? It's possible. It takes I time. don't know. It takes, and we can talk, because you gave me great questions and I answered a lot of them with the same answer, which I thought that's not going to be very interesting. But like courage, guts. Yeah. So sometimes it takes, and a lot of times they don't do this because it's not comial phone, not the right thing to do. It takes the top person to go, we're doing this. Yep. And very, very few do it. Doug Conant, which, who was a good friend and CEO of Campbell's, mm -hmm. we brought him the goodness company, which is good from way back then. And he was good. Mm -hmm. The company was good. Yep. And we presented our whole final presentation in tomato soup cans with things growing out of them, you know, so going more towards fresh and... You know, and creating soup kitchens all over the world, the real goodness company. And his people were saying, and there's a Kodak story too, suppose somebody does something bad. I go, well, we'll just like, why are you thinking like that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But they always will find, you know, because it's terrifying. So it takes a person at the top to go, like, we need to do this. Like, I don't think Elon Musk asks a lot of people. Yeah, he goes right. for it. Yeah. I mean, it takes courage to, um, and bravery to, to embrace change. Conviction and, and craziness. Yeah, that as well, for sure. All right, so with all of that that you've done in your, your career and from writing books, and we're going to look, we're going to talk about the music in a moment, um, you've raised a family. And, yeah. Um, I had the fortune of at least meeting one of your daughters. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, in talking with Indra and other, other people, it, it's hard to create that balance. And for What balance? That's right. <laughs> so balance, no balance is a word invented to make especially females crazy mm -hmm. because there is no balance. There is no balance. So what was your journey like in parenting? Well, I waited a long time. I was like that T-shirt, oops, I forgot to have a baby. Yeah. And my bestie adopted a little Chinese baby and I went with her, Liz Marigold, who wrote, uh, ghost wrote and wrote with me a lot of my books. 
And we went to China and I saw this kid and I go, oh, you're not gonna be good at this. I'm gonna take the kid. I mean, like she was, you know, Chinese <laughs> babies are like, and she says, no, this is mine. And she has boundaries. So I put in my papers and that's how spontaneous it was. And when I saw my first little girl, Georgica, Gigi, we call her, sitting between these two evil kind of people, because I was, I was warned that she might have quite a few things wrong with her. And honestly, when they stepped away, she flopped over. Mm. She had every kind of thing you could imagine, you know, weak joints and, you know, couldn't sit up. And, but she was gorgeous. Mm. And um, so I got my first one like that. And then guess what happened? Same thing that happened to my mother. Oh, I want a sister. I want a sister. <laughs> that went on for a year. I want. I go. Listen, you're my boutique baby, and you're not getting a sister. You go to all. Of, you know. You come along with me, and um, of course she won. And I got CC, the Alphabet Girls, and you yeah. have Z. Yeah. So yeah, I got my little one. And you said you call them G Z. Well, you call your Z uh, X, X, X X X right. Mine is G G Georgica, after my father George. Okay. And my little one is CC Clara Cecil after my mother. Okay. So Gigi and CC, and yours. X. And then Elon has alpha. Yeah. Elon has letters and numbers. Letters. Too. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Incredible. But it was by accident. Yeah. Kind of. It's kind of. Yeah. Happened later and. Happened later. Um, best thing everybody says is that ever ever happened I know. to me. Be best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. All of it. When I first met you, you told me that. You said, have his... I, I, I don't know if we're talking about regrets or just, you know, whatever. And you're like, the one thing I would tell you is have as many kids as you possibly can. And quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't. See? No, I didn't Nobody listen. Nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> I, I didn't tap into the, 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 well, the machine. It's not too late. It's not. Honey bunny. Yeah. No. <laughs> we'll keep it going. <laughs> okay. But, but I love that. I mean, like, because it, it's that impactful being a parent. and, and I've you know. placed a lot of children, and I say to your audience, anybody that wants to adopt a baby, if they want help, I will help them. <laughs> That's great. So talking about the work that you do, you know, and we were just talking about elements of culture. Yeah. And quantifying culture and thinking about the future and you know, how, you, how some of it is completely visionary and edge-dwelling and art. Some of it is science and putting numbers around it. I, I just wanted to hear on your side, you know, in the books and in the work that you've done and the journeys you've taken um, uh, CEOs on, you know, how do you think about the uh, balance between art and science? Uh, I think it's... It's art, science, and one other thing which is like this almost genetic ability to put things together and have something else come out that looks completely different. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that, and I think it's courage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw cocooning in 1982. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 82. We went to P&G shortly after that. A.G. Lafley was chairman. Come on down, tell us what you think. I said, I think nobody's going to go to Walmart. It's all going to be home delivered. He said, she can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> no. He said no. I go, yeah, yeah. that's what it's going to be. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, prediction, I mean, we have ways we do it. You have ways you do it. Yep. We look out far, mm -hmm. which is pretty easy, mm -hmm. in 20, 30, 40, 50. Mm -hmm. We backcast, and we try to create the timeline, which is the trickiest part. Mm -hmm. Like, how fast, how slow will this happen? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Metaverse, and I know you're going to get to that, like we're talking about Metaverse the last six years, and uh, Zuckerberg, just because of me, changed his company to Meta. No, he didn't, <laughs> but it helped. It helped. They thought he, like, oh, I guess that's true, Faye. Now they're going, well, but we don't have to get on it, do we? They go, uh-huh, you, you really do. Yeah. And interestingly, Walmart got on, which is like, when Walmart's ahead of you, you better worry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, McDonald's is on and CVS is on. I don't think they're on in a very interesting way, but they got on. Yeah. And what I love about it is in, in futurism and uh, looking toward the future, you're, you're with definitely um, CEOs and large organizations, you're sowing those seeds. And I think it's it, your point's well taken that it's art, science, and the ability to hone in on what the seed is that you're planting. Because 
you know, the organizations are small com compared, our organization yeah, compared to, to the organizations that we consult. Yeah. And what they do with it is, is it has the ripple effect. But they should have two separate kind of organizations. There's that big thing that keeps it go, you know, keeps the thing going. It's yeah, like the, the core, the big choo-choo train, mm -hmm. you know. Then it has really nothing to do with foretelling and foreseeing. They shouldn't be bothered with that. Mm -hmm. They need to keep the big machine going. And somebody else, it doesn't have to be that big, and they don't even have to really know about it. Mm -hmm. That's the mistake I think big companies make. Somebody else or another group like sees what's coming and tries to get ready for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the group we're a part of. Not that they can't. Not the machine. They yeah. can't. They cannot. It is so hard to be part of a Fortune 200 mm -hmm. that, I mean, I mean, we. I come and talk, you know, as a part of my business, I speak, and yeah, it's called, I call it consultainment. Like, they, like, go, oh, that's so interesting, so interesting, and then they go back and, like, keep the machine going. Yeah. So I think it's a separate group that hasn't been invented yet, really. Mm -hmm. It's not innovation departments. Yeah. Yeah, someone who's really future casting. Yeah, and, and a group. focusing on that. And then, and then looking at the moments kind of on that timeline yeah. when the core shifts. Yeah, right? and when to feed it. Like, you should never feed the future into that big machine because you know what the big machine does? It yeah, it's eats a, it it's like, or sits on it. It's a parasite. Something. Yeah. So let's, let's shift gears and let's talk about a body of work that you've been doing where you're taking your vision of the future and you're applying it to music, right? Uh, and uh, for, maybe you tell us a little bit about what this endeavor entails, sure. who you've been working with, and in a moment we're going to listen to a little of the music. Okay. So, I didn't like this COVID thing. Hmm. I mean, nobody liked it, but I told you, I do not like being like, you know. Locked away. Yeah. Actually, I did. I got, I got, I was very lucky. I got corona very early. Um, because I go, I'm never going to do that. I went to Los I went for a client thing, and of course I got it. I got it, and I had so many wonderful antibodies mm. that I just decided I was just going to go out and do everything I wanted to do. But anyway, I was I did a lot of work in South Africa with a bank called Invest Tech, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time in South Africa. And um, I was into, but when I came back to New York during COVID, early COVID, I um, I was interviewed by this woman named Carmen Murray. She had a talk show. And it was um, on this talk show was this other woman and somebody from their university. And I was talking about, like, you know, blah, blah, whatever you talk about on talk shows. And Carmen said, what did you always want to do that you never were able to do? I said, I've always wanted to write a rock song. And this woman, her name is Karen Zoid, raised her hand and said, I'm the number one rocker in South Africa, which I did not know. I should have mm -hmm. done my homework better. And she said, I'll help you write a rock song. Awesome. And I go, like, fantastic. Eleven songs later. Eleven songs, wow. We wrote, we wrote uh, like, a, almost a rock future opera, if you want to say, a predictive. And maybe people will more be able to hear about what's going to happen if you sing it to them. Mm -hmm. So that's what these songs are about, what's going to happen. Yeah, like the happen. multisensory, like bringing these visions of where the, the world is going in the future yeah. by putting it to music. Yep. Let's listen to one, and then okay. you can tell us a little bit about this one. Here hangs a cocoon, strong and tight, built to withstand all of your might. Before the barricade, there are tripwires that call the motorcade to rush me off to a hall where dancers and party people regale. They don't believe in answers. They won't ask how I feel. They know it's rude to tamper with a heart of steel. Oh, I'm 
People think they want the truth, but they don't. That's why I call them trends. Ah, this is a little applause. Thank you. <laughs> so, you yeah. tell us a little about that one. Well, um, you know, she's got a gorgeous voice, of course. You know, interestingly, Fortuna, a very old song, it's like from the 13th century, is about this group of artists that had to hide out in a cave, otherwise they'd be killed, hmm. and talk about the future and what was going to happen. So it's like, oh, fortune, like the moon, mm -hmm. you're unpredictable, unknowable. So um, it's like that is my, my story is, uh, you know, uh, uh, I call them trends, but they're really truths. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just looking, you know, it's just all about looking ahead and what's going to happen. I had another one, which was, I don't know if you have it here, uh, like retailers on life support. Mm -hmm. I have another one called Coming Out of the Cave, which is what we're doing now, where eyes almost hurt when we get with people, you know, so bright. Yeah. And um, then another advisory one that says what I learned uh, while I was living and hanging about, so. Love it. Let's listen to the second one. Okay. And you And, you know, all these restaurants are saying, Kathleen, my, I, she's my chief of staff, but she's my chief of life. Kathleen <laughs> Cantwell is life. here, yeah. Um, we went into, like, a little restaurant because we're starving. And, you know, almost all the restaurants are takeout, right? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it has really shifted our culture. And just when we're, you know, coming out of this, uh, where, like, again, like touching each other and seeing each other and going, oh, my God, I feel so good. And, you know, but do I want to come all the way back? And if I come all the way back, I'm going to go home. I mean, it's very, for civilization, it's very, very confusing. And Where do you think, where do you think that goes? Like this, you know, being cocooned, using yeah. your, your word, now coming out of it. Right. And we're in that process. I think this year is a lot about that. Yeah. Um, and where where do you see it landing? Because I mean, people desire human connection, but yeah, but they want to stay home too. Yeah. And they don't trust us. Mm -hmm. as, you know what happened is I, you let the you let the people out at COVID, not meaning to, but you said, don't come. You know, stay home. We'll get sick if we come out, right? And then they stayed home, and they go like, oh, that's my kid. Wow, hi. <laughs> you know, and oh, that's my, you know, other. And oh, and maybe I'm going to cook something or do something. Or, and then they kind of like liked it. And then, well, women work 24 hours a day. They're on a 24-hour cycle anyway, but they work when they want to tune in. And then you go, okay, game's up, come back. And they go, mm, not so fast. Great resignation and the great renegotiation. And that's what's happening now. They're renegotiating with the, with the, you know, with business owners, and saying, "I'm not so sure how I want it." I think things are going to start all over again. I think they're going to start like small pods, and I think that, you know, instead of Zuckerberg going to Hawaii, <laughs> he should be going and visiting his employees. I think it's us go to them, uh, and and like spending real time. Maybe there'll be work pods all over the world. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get them back into the way it was. office buildings. So let's let's shift from music. Well, uh, before we shift from music, it, was this a one-time thing? Are you planning more music? 
Well, I haven't dropped this album. You're the oh. first people oh. that I ever Thank allowed. You. Or, yeah, nobody's heard this. So I'm thinking, because... But you, you heard the you heard the clap, yeah, right? Yeah, that so. wasn't come, but they're polite people. You know, <laughs> I don't know if they really liked. It. No, but I'm thinking, should I put it in NFT? I'd love to hear from out there what you think. Drop it, in, like you know, I have 11 songs and 11 NFTs, or should I like? Karin wants to do like you know concerts or art installation. There's a million ways uh, to do when it. When I first heard it, I was thinking like art installation for sure. So for our online uh, viewers. Faith has posed the question, right. what should she do with her 11 songs of the future? If you have ideas, add them into the comments. Yeah, I'd love to know what you think. And we will have Aaron Poor read those off to us, and we'll Great. take them in real time. That would be really helpful. So we'll see, we'll see what, what, what the, the fanboys and fangirls okay. have to say. Let's talk science fiction for a moment. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, whenever you're edge-dwelling and thinking about scenarios of the future, whether it's a decade or 30 or 40 years in advance, science fiction is an, an amazing methodology to allow you to push the envelope and design scenarios. You've just finished a seven-book series, um, science fiction series, and I would love for you to tell us about it and then also talk about the power of science fiction in your work. Okay, well, that was another COVID project. Okay. So um, I'm writing, you know, we're writing, I'm writing this with Kate Newland, who used to be the president of my company. And um, it started, as most great ideas do, drinking. <laughs> so we're drinking a great deal. Drinking or smoking. Yeah, or whatever, whatever is your pleasure. Yes. But it's true. Mood management is going to be the, one of the biggest trends. And actually, we consulted with Constellation Brands on mood management, alcohol. Yep. And um, encourage the investment of 4.4 billion in canopy growth, smoking, vaping, gummies, that, so that. So we're just chatting, and you know, I was just saying, like, you know, a lot of people come up to me at parties, and they go, like, well, what's next? And I go, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. And then they say, how do you, fig- how do you figure this out? I go, aliens. I go, aliens. Tell me. You know, <laughs> what I should be saying. And they've been great. And so Kate, who's so hysterically funny, goes, that's it. We're going to write a book about this futurist. And she's like, you know, cool and everything. But how come she's always right? I mean, statistically, 95% correct. Because she's being informed by these, they're called Islings, and they live 2,000 years ahead. So they know what's going to happen. And they inform her to help society see uh-huh. what's coming and save themselves. And that's what it's about. And HBO's looking at it now. I don't know. Really? HBO's? Yeah. Be, we were talking about uh, Raised by Wolves. We earlier, love it, so. don't we? Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, you get the, the androids and the, and the humans. And... But robots are going to be human. Uh, you know, I don't know if you read Clara with a K in the Sun by Ishiguro, the guy that wrote Remains of the Day. He's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And it's about a a companion robot. We're all going to have them given to a young teenager and how their relationship develops. And work is being done on these robots. Mm -hmm. And they're going to know what you want to drink when you come home. And they're going to be, like, not talk to you about things you hate and, 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 like, be great companions and read to you and talk to you and maybe have sex with you. I don't know. No, I, 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 I believe that I was, we were talking before we started here, we did a presentation, maybe uh, an analysis, maybe six or seven years ago, and just at, on that topic. I mean, right. robots, when you get this idea of mechanical and they become human-like and you don't think about it as, I think you said yesterday, artificial intelligence. It's just intelligence. It's just intelligence. And, and you break down those barriers, it's going to be amazing companion. I and know. You're going to cross the boundaries that we would have not crossed with technology. And I think, you know very intimate relationships will emerge out of that. Yes, and, you know, robot replacement is what we all know is going to happen in the back of our minds, terrifying to us. And um, I think I think um, one of the great, like, it might have been Elon said, you know, that's the greatest threat to society, actually. Mm-hmm. So if you're not going to want to come to work, the thing about robots is they don't need food, they don't need water, they don't complain, they don't need vacations, they don't need light to work. You know, and the more and more that they can do your job and you go, not my job, I'm so intelligent. But no, they've written, they write music, they do a lot of stuff that we don't know about. And at Davos, all the 
mainly guys, so I'm saying it in the right way, men out there going, we love people, no, that, and they get into the rooms and they go, how fast can we, you know, 40% in IBM, how fast can we do this robot replacement? That is coming. And I don't know, we'll have a lot of time. Maybe we'll write a lot of songs then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time poverty is, is removed when the robots yeah. move in. All right, let's 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 look at some of the things you've talked about over the last uh, two months, two years, uh, as some of the predictions, some of the, the, the um, thoughts you've had. So we'll start with the metaverse. And you have said, hey, this is, this is going to be major. You mm -hmm. said I've been, you've been talking about it for a while. Tell us where you see it and where you see it going. So the more IRL in real life becomes difficult, mm -hmm. untenable, hard to negotiate, uh, natural resources, you know, uh, waning, the more, remember we talked about mood management and escapism. So escapism, you go to the movies, right? Now you go home, you watch, you know, Netflix. <clears throat> but if you can go to a place where there's no peripheral vision, which is now you need an Oculus, mm -hmm. but I know some large companies that are working on a lens, mm -hmm. no Oculus, no screen, and you go in, and let's say a little ahead, you can um, smell and feel and touch and live a more beautiful life and... Um, you know, meet really interesting avatars, people. Are they real? Are the avatars? Are avatars real? Some of the future ethical and psychological questions we'll be asking. You are going to go there more and more. I started with gaming. That's where it started. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we, we created the first game for Tylenol ever in a corporation. Uh, uh, you know, it was a, you know, young team and, you know, competing for the brand Tylenol. Now a lot of brands have, uh, like gaming, um, gaming was a way to escape. Some brands dropped in, right, in some concerts. and they, But gradually, more and more, we're just going to be, like, wandering around in there, buying real estate. Uh, somebody in our talent bank, Krista Kim, who you would really love, built something called Mars House, Sold it just for five hundred and twenty thousand American dollars. It's on the blockchain. Mm. So, can you envision buying a house for five hundred twenty thousand dollars that's on the blockchain? Maybe not, but she did sell it, and now she's building it in IRL. She's back and forth a lot, but you can buy your block. Do you know that um, through Superworld? So, let's say I want to buy my block. Uh, you can buy a like he's laid out all the land and people are buying real estate yeah. with the hope that they can resell it. Yeah, and I think, I think when you hear people dismiss it, it's kind of yeah. back to what you were saying before, even in your song, yeah. about not wanting to believe the truths, yeah. right? And all the ingredients are there. You can call them ingredients, you can call them signals, whether it is immersive entertainment, gaming, 5G, all of these things are pushing us toward a metaverse right. reality. Yeah. And and it's it's going to unfold. There may be people who are it's going and it's gonna have a lot of layers to it. And right. That's what makes it super fast. And they're already talking about rape in the metaverse you know, like all the like policing of the metaverse. The ethics. Or, yeah, the ethics. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, we and we had some discussions just on how do we also think about when we think about preferred futures, we can also think about a preferred future of the metaverse. And ensuring that, you know, we try to design something that is better in certain ways. Yeah. You know? I think I'm getting an indication that we might have a, either a question or it could be an incredible idea for your 11 songs. Just, oh, uh, great. Yeah, we got, we got a music update. Oh, good. A couple uh, crew in the, in the crowd wants to see the NFT album, so that could be a good thing to explore. Okay. We got a good person for that here at yeah. Sparks and Honey. Also, maybe check out the pressed vinyl. Avenue, if that's something that you'd like to see. And then we had another question from our own Corey Manna in the LinkedIn chat. In kind of in with the metaverse being a new exploding space. I have faith, how do you navigate resistant or skeptical clients who don't believe or really want to engage with your idea? Can you give us some well, tips and tricks there? So, like, in what circumstance? <clears throat> a lot of people pay us a lot, right? And then they go, then that's not true. <laughs> like Kodak, I mean, classic, right? 
what's the future of film? Like, oh, like a year later with every interview and every form of methodology, right? We go, it's going to be, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be digital. It's the film is over. And they yelled at me. I don't like being yelled at. They go like, sure. you're wrong. It's, 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 I, we asked you about film. It's like, we asked you about film and you're telling us about digital. They go, but it is going to be digital. Well, good, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know that you can convince people. I've been trying to convince McDonald's for a long, long time, vegetarianism. We work with Tyson. I love John Tyson, but he said to me, if you're going to talk that way, maybe we shouldn't work together. Like I said, it's the F word. I said, I just said veg. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, so I don't know that you can. That's why I say it has to be, I, I really believe, I don't know if you could, a special group. Not that they're smarter or, you know, but a different kind of group that embraces the future because 50% of these, and this is a prediction, we can write it down, <laughs> of these Fortune 500s are, will not be here in 10 years. And why? I mean, not, ju not just because they didn't listen to me. They didn't <laughs> listen to the culture. They didn't, you know, and what do chairmen say when you're having a, like, a, I know your drink's bourbon, right? So my drink's any drink. So, you know, when you're having a drink with them, they it's go, management. Like, it yeah, is, it hey, the drink is. We're, we're, I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to be out of here. That is almost criminal. That CEO criminality yeah, to say, I'm going to be out of here. So, Ten yeah. years from now, I'm not, I'm not worried about yeah. it. I'm worried about a quarter. Right. But sometimes we get believed, you know, like in repeat performance, you know, like we come back and back and they go like, okay, well, I'll try it. But it's never embraced. Not really. Yeah. So you don't look for love in futurism, I guess. Love that. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's talk psychedelics. So okay. um, you said that it needs a rebranding, um, yes. and you see it as as a as as a path of the future. And Absolutely. So tell tell us about. So psychedelics thoughts. does need a new name, um, because people go like, "Oh, weird drugs," you know. But actually, J and J is ma making a, a, an inhalable um, for depression mm -hmm. from Special K ketamine, which was a big like bar drug. In case anybody missed that part. Uh, you know, but they're using it for depression. They're using, um, not not J and J, but others are experimenting with, um, you know, anti-anxiety. Now, why are there lobbyists? Why do they? Why is there so much pressure against cannabis as a medicine? Let's say there are like thousands of strains of cannabinoids in these plants. You know, they can be used for like um, like Parkinson's. You know, people are, but the 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 you know. A lot of the companies that make drugs go, no, no. I mean, they're over if we find, like the Indians did, those people that we killed and kicked out, you know, that it's in the earth and in the land and in plants. Again, plants. I think Pollen just wrote a book, Your Mind on Plants, mm -hmm. you know, where he talks a lot about that. But, yeah. And, and would you, and like in this field of futurism, I mean, the, the benefit of psychedelics in order to helping someone envision the future. For sure. Well, Timothy Leary has said he changed his whole life. I'm not going to point to the people in the room because I really actually don't know who they are. <laughs> um, that, but many people are microdosing before they come to work. And they're doing it. You don't have to raise your hand. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm saying, and they, you know, and I, you know, I think the backstory to that is, I mean, it's a very deep backstory, is that they know that robot competition, robots win if they're programmed correctly, as we saw in, you know, Raised by Wolves, if they're programmed correctly, right? So I think we're giving ourselves a little booster. So, you know, a little. Superpower. Yeah. A little extra. A little extra something. As soon as it's going to be a chip. Mm -hmm. I mean, Elon's working on a Neuralink, yeah, Neuralink, which is going to be a chip to help you think. And is he trying to read your mind? Maybe. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron, any other questions? We're good. Okay. I want to. I let, let's um, wrap with a uh, thought about what's what's next. And you could tell me that what the aliens aliens have told you. The as, as you do at the at the at, at the uh, cocktail parties, but you know, I, I was saying before this weekend we have an incredible event with one of our advisory board members, where we're bringing together astronauts and neuroscientists and AI specialists in California and, and the whole 
discussion is to explore the future of humanity, humanity 2.0. And um, that's a very worthwhile thing to be discussing. And, and many of the topics we've covered today kind of lean into that. I, you know, when you think about the future of humanity, you know, really getting out of the, the day-to-day and thinking about society at large, what are some of those things that you're thinking about? Well, if, if humanity is going to survive, which it's not looking so good, mm-hmm. they will have to be able to somehow, you know, package love. I mean, the thing that's that we do have, you know, even you know, even raised by wolves, you know, it's hard for robots. Well, the way they're getting there, right, mm-hmm. to experience, you know, love. So. What makes you, you know, pick up a kitten or help somebody? It's like this kind of, it's not just empathy. It's just this, like, love feeling. So I think that, um, a a loss of ego, which is very difficult to get countries, as we see. I mean, how is that short guy going to back out of that country? I don't know. I don't know. You know, they talked about sending his mistress in to talk to him. Love. Even, I mean, with all those committees and the UN and everything, the thing about sending somebody he cares about in to talk to him, crazy. So um, that, 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 that would be the survival tool. You know, uh, also, you know, I always say if everybody grabbed an extra kid, hmm. you know, I, I once said to Colin Powell, please, you know, Colin, I run for president. Do, he goes, you run for president. Mm-hmm. I go, no, nah, I don't think so. I'll probably get fired. Um, <laughs> you know, well, uh, he, I said, what can I do for you? He said, save one kid. Mm-hmm. And I really think he was my road or my voice for Gigi, my purse. Oh, was that? I was going to ask. He said, save one kid. And I don't know. She saved me. Mm-hmm. I was the kind of person that walked into a restaurant and go like, why do they let children in restaurants? It's so awful. <laughs> and now I'm going, can I hold your baby, miss? I mean, you know, like, yeah. you know, it changes you. Baby changes everything. It Brilliant does. J&J line. Yeah, so I think, I think that being smaller, just being smaller. What do you mean with being smaller? Oh, Islings are this tiny. Mm. If you ever want to see them, you close your eyes and you open them, you see like little dots. That's oh, how little they are. But no, I mean being smaller, not look to get bigger mm-hmm. and bigger and more powerful and bigger. Like maybe be a little smaller. Mm. So. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Faith, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Here. It's, it's wonderful to You're spend time with you. You're a great interviewer. That could be your next thing. I mean, I think Jimmy Fallon's getting tired. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy <laughs> Fallon out there, yeah. I, I love it. Um, it, it. It's wonderful to spend time with you and and uh, to see everything that you've done for the industry. Thank uh, you. It, it, you. You've blazed the trail. You've thank made such you. an incredible impact. I hope to have you back again. I'd love to. Um, it, it's, well, we have a full concert. Exactly. That, I was thinking you, you have... Um, the, the musician from South Africa, yeah, which is here. Zoid's Maybe coming. we come in and we listen to all 11 songs. Yeah. And we turn it into some kind of gamified. Could. I don't know. We'll think about it. Yeah. And then we, and we do it in the metaverse. How about okay. that? Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so, so thank you again. Pleasure. I want to thank um, all of our in-studio guests and our viewers from around the globe for joining us today with Faith Popcorn. We will be back here tomorrow with an incredible um, uh, session with Gen Z talking about personal finance. You'll be led by our new practice lead, Hannah Hickman. Um, Until tomorrow, consider yourself briefed.